The rationalisation programme of the 1960s swept away about half of the UK rail network and many old working practices, no more little sidings everywhere. Instead, new switching terminals to efficiently serve wagon load mixed freight. After all, intermodal traffic was in its infancy and it would never catch on anyway. How wrong they were, even as the huge new marshalling yards were being laid out on the outskirts of railway cities like Carlisle, Edinburgh and Sheffield, the market was changing. Boxes most certainly did catch on and those yards never did fulfil their promise. Old marshalling yards, or as they were called back in the day, new yards, were conceived in the 50s, built in the 60s and pretty much redundant by the 70s. We know the places, Kingmoor, Miller Hill, Tinsley, all big strategic sites for rail freight at the time, which as road transport made inroads into UK rail freight became less and less relevant to the modern railway. Some of these sites still survive, indeed, in Edinburgh and Carlisle, they're largely to do with infrastructure now, but still some commercial traffic, train load traffic, remains in those yards. It's interesting that as uh, wagon load traffic here declined, wagon load traffic in Europe is still 30-40% of the freight moved. In this country now, though, there's still demand for huge uh, acreage in terms of, uh, of rail freight yards. Today, with the UK industry dominated by bulk carriers and intermodal block trains, the demand is for much more localised, rail-connected logistics parks with fewer, longer sidings and much more storage and handling space suited to last-mile delivery. Involved in many of the most successful new terminals, including this one, iPort Rail in Doncaster, consultant David Cross says changes in demand are driving the changes in terminal design. Two sectors of the UK rail freight market are showing growth and are forecast to continue showing growth into the future and that's the intermodal sector and the aggregate and construction material sector. Both of these sectors are now characterised by freight talks and customers alike wanting to maximise the scope of the train. In the intermodal case maximum number of containers both ways and in the aggregate case maximum tonnage per train. Both of these help make rail freight more economic. Terminals are no different. Terminals need to receive and deal with these trains and so terminals in the future need to be prepared to receive trains of this size and don't want to waste time splitting trains, shunting and doing things that would impact the turnaround of the service. This means that the modern terminals that are growing up need to have a big footprint as with the old terminals but now they need to have long sidings, less track, more storage space and importantly a good relationship both with the local communities and the environment. Not all the old infrastructure is being swept away. Redundant facilities at places like former coal mines have a new lease of life thanks to people like Chris Davidson who directs major projects for the Harworth Group and repurposes former industrial sites and their rusting rails. I'd say the market is maturing as more occupiers are asking about rail as well as road access uh, with a shortage of road haulage drivers of at least, what, 50,000? Concerns about traffic congestion and, and climate change plus the growing demands on the same day and next day supply chain. It's apparent that rail now has a lot to offer. Harworth is a, an expert at redeveloping big, dirty, complex former industrial sites and this inevitably means reusing as many former industrial assets as possible. Uh, a number of sites in our portfolio have historic rail connections and siding agreements are still in place including former collieries like uh, Kellingley and power stations like Ironbridge and we, we've made them a core part of the, the, their master plans. So the end use is entirely site specific, but on sites like Kellingley uh, and Gascoigne Interchange in Yorkshire, we want to deliver rail freight terminals to support uh, multimodal logistics as part of decarbonising the, the wider supply chain. Some former sites are even finding new railway uses, like this new headquarters for GB Rail Freight under construction at Peterborough in the south of England. Although the big marshalling yards of the 1960s are outmoded, many traditional freight yards have remained viable and are adapting and thriving. Moss End near Glasgow is busier than ever and set to expand considerably. 
The Moss End Railhead is a very successful multi-commodity terminal handling automotive products, cars, containers, steel, bricks and cement. But it's an old terminal and it's characterised, as we said earlier in this piece, about short sidings, lots of shunting, lots of track and not so much storage space. And the, the important point there is it, it occupies about 30 acres. The new MARP site next door being developed by PD Sterling will be over 100 acres. We'll have eight 800 metre sidings, storage space for 5,000 containers. And that summarises the different approach needed between an old marshalling yard or railhead and a modern, a modern freight terminal. Harworth is looking at the next generation of strategic rail freight interchanges moving beyond the sheds and containers layout at sites like uh, Durf and, and Hams Hall. You know, warehouses do so much more than simply store goods these days and some are closer to factories in their capabilities so we're, we're planning to cater for a range of distribution and industrial uses on the same site. If, you, if you're going to invest in having rail access uh, and handling facilities, it makes sense to make these available to the widest possible range of users and uses. Chris Davidson there. Well, whether it's large developments like David's Moss End or repurposed sites like Chris's Gascoigne Wood, freight terminals will continue to evolve. Even smaller projects like trials here for Highland Spring Water in Scotland will have a role in the future too. And it's a role that's a world away from those white elephant marshalling yards of the 1960s. Stuart Cameron for Rail Freight Live.